Oh, because I'm not in the. Oh no, it's okay. I'm I'm live. I'm live. Okay, so um, this upcoming assignment is going to be ca is called cause and effect, and it's sort of cause and effect, and it's also telling a story. So if you look at this picture right here, this guy's walking down the street. Um, what's the story here? What's going on? What do you think? Where do you think this guy is going? What do you think he's doing? What do you think this guy is, he's, what do you think he does for a living? Where do, you, where do you think he's going? What's going on in this scene? Walking down the street, I'm not seeing any responses, so I'll just kind of go with what last couple of classes have said. So he's walking down the street, you look at his, um, you look at his bag, he's got kind of a leather, so, so you could have a briefcase, but he's not a briefcase, he's got kind of more artistic, like a soft leather bag. And he's he's walking with purpose because he's got he's got some some length to his stride. He's not walking slowly, so he's on his way somewhere. Looks like he's on his way. So he's not just casually strolling. He's on his way somewhere, and he's got his arms swinging. He's got his bag with him. I, I imagine he's going to maybe he's a designer. He's he's well, he got that casual. He's got his chucks on. He's got a jeans and a a, a t-shirt there, a colored t-shirt. Um, he's a designer going somewhere and. And you can imagine, you know, or he's like the so the assignment here is that we've established this character. Let's say this is the first shot of the assignment. It's going to be a two photo assignment. So you're going to have one photo that establishes a scene and another photo that's what happened later. So maybe you, it could be as simple as a as a bowl of cereal full and then another photo where the bowl of cereal is empty with a spoon in it and a little, little milk and a few cornflakes left, or maybe raisin bran or something. If you just flakes left in the bottom of the bowl and now the bowl is empty started with a full bowl now it's empty i'm um, here you can have this guy walking down the street and then you can have another shot of him at a big you know drafting table drawing something out uh, very artistic with his bag sitting on the desk next to him um, or you could even have him at a breakfast you could have a coffee cup and you wouldn't even have to see him maybe just a hand with a coffee cup and the, the bag sitting on a table behind him but it's going to be two photographs one that starts off a scene and then one that carries on later. Something that's something that's happened, um, and it can be stuff, it can be people, but there's going to be a cause and effect, a start and a finish. Um, it doesn't even it could be a start and a continuation. It doesn't have to be a finish, but it's going to be two photographs that establish like something happened here and then something later happened here. All right. Um, so the next step is going to be putting your photographs into a PowerPoint. And to put your photographs into a PowerPoint, of course, you have to open PowerPoint. And so, oops, I'm not in the... You have to open PowerPoint, and it's LASD, my SharePoint, and it's already in my, my browser. But there's going to be a link in the assignment, but it's LASD-my.sharepoint.com, which is Microsoft's OneDrive. And there's, you go to OneDrive if you're not using a school account. But I've got my school account here. So then I just go to the app waffle and I click on PowerPoint and I go to PowerPoint. Here we are. I'm going to start a blank presentation. And here we are. I'm not going to have any words. It's just going to be these two photos. And so I'll start by just drawing, a, selecting these two text boxes and deleting them. I don't want to use them, so I'm not going to have them. Then I want, because it's photos, I want a completely neutral, not their background. I'm going to turn the background color black. So I'm going to go to Design, Background, Solid Fill. I'm going to click on this and click on Black. So now my background is black. And I'm going to go to add another, add another slide, but oops, that's not black. I don't want that. So what, I'll, what I can do is in Background, I can click on Apply to All. And then, as I add my next slide, oops, I have to click on that, add my next slide, it's black as well. So every slide I add from now on will be black. The background is standard. I'm going to draw my box around my two slides here, or my, or my text boxes, because I'm just having a photo. Then I upload my photo, and my photo is going to fill this it was going to fill it top to bottom. I don't want to stretch. I, there was a couple of people in, in one of the last assignments filled left to right and top to bottom, which stretched the ratio of the photo. Most photos are rectangles that are smaller than this. 
So if it, that turns out to be the case, don't stretch the photo to fill the frame. Either uh, leave the height to width ratio the same. So stretch in proportion, which usually in, in, um, in PowerPoint, I think you can drag the corner and it stretches in proportion. In Pixlr, you can drag the corner and it can be either fixed or uh, free. So when you drag the corner, the height and width expand at the same amount or you can drag the corner and, and, and completely change the proportion. For photographs, you never want to, to change the size of the photograph without, change, without keeping the proportion. You want to keep the height and width ratio the same always. Um, all right, so then you've got your photos and then I want you to make a transition and the transition should be a fade of at least 1.2 seconds. And once again, apply to all. Now, if you had a longer slideshow, it would make more sense. I'm going to go out to my um, already made slideshow to show you the, the look of those transitions. So here's my slide. And I'm going to go to slideshow and start my show. And you can see the transitions are very smooth. There's that, that point where you can see the one image is superimposed on the other. Back in the day when I was in school, we were learning about multimedia slideshows where you had like all kinds of different, like different images in different corners and things fading in and out with each other. And uh, at that time, they told us about a study that had been done um, where they had a subject and they made a video about the subject and they had people watch the video take a test when they were done with the video on what they saw and then wait a couple of days and take another test to see if what they remembered and retention went down over time. They watched the video and they took a test and they took another test. Retention went down for the video over time. And then they showed them a multimedia presentation where there was a soundtrack and there were pictures fading in and out between, with each other in you know, multiple, regions on, multiple regions on the screen and they had them watch the subject and then take a test and then a couple of days later, they took a test. And in this case, they took a test later and they found that the people retained more after watching the multimedia slideshow at, afterwards than they did right after, right after seeing it. And one of the theories was that there's something going on with the brain when two of these images are superimposed on each other. And um, I've been trying to find the study ever since school. And I, I, have, not, I have yet to find it but it's a thing so um this fade between uh, this is a one and a half second fade and so that's what you i want at least one and a half seconds 1.2 to one and a half seconds fade in your slideshow and um that and no transition at all are usually the best transitions but for a multimedia slideshow a dissolve a fade is is going to look pretty good um so the last step of the of this assignment is I want you to take that slideshow you may like two slide slideshow. I'm going to take that slideshow and put it into your Google site. And this will be a little bit of review if you didn't do the Google site assignment yet, but um, if, or if, if you did. So sites.google.com, there'll be a link in the assignment. And here we are. So I, I'm going to go to the YouTube Sway and Embed Code page that I already made for the last assignment. And like before, I'm going to add a page. So I'm going to go to the pages section. And I don't have my page yet there. So I'm going to add my page and I call it, whoops, cause and effect. And now it's added a page. It's added a, a link up here at the top of my main page. And I need to embed my, my PowerPoint here. So I'm going to click on this, but I don't have the embed code yet. So I need to get the embed code. So I'll go back to my presentation and I'm going to use, I'm going to use the elements that are because this presentation has stuff in it. The other one is just two black squares that you can't tell the difference. So I'm going to use this one. Don't click on this share. This share just gets you a link that's not going to help. So you copy link and you can send somebody the link and they can see it. Um, you want over here, file share over here which gets you embed and then it gets you the code. Here's the code. Now I want, I'm going to pick the bigger one because I want a, like a larger 
a larger view. I don't want it to be so tiny on my web page. So I'm going to pick the bigger one, which changes the code down here. I'll click on this. Control C. I've copied my code. I close this. And then I go to my YouTube page. I mean, YouTube, my, my Google Sites page. Click on Embed. I have to choose Embed Code again. And then paste the code in. Next, it, there's, there's my there's the beginning of what I need to have there it gives me a preview and then insert now it's given me the now the little box they, the the bounding box they have for this is a bit small so I'm gonna move this no I guess I can't move it over so I'm gonna you, you can drag the box bigger so I'm gonna make the box much bigger and for some reason it's cutting off a little bit but it's not it's so small that I don't really mind Unless I can move this over, it's not letting me move it over any. So it's close enough. You could make it a little bit, you could go back and get the embed code and make it a little bit smaller, but I like it nice and big. Um, and it's not so offensive that it's cutting off too much. There's probably a way to go into the code and change the size just a tiny bit to make it work, but I'll leave that up to you. To turn this assignment, oh, you can also look and see what it's going to look like by clicking on the preview button. Here's the preview. So I can click in and there it, it's fading just like it did when we we're presenting. So that's kind of cool. I like that. I you know, really pr uh, prefer that transition. And depending on your show, you, you, you can speed up or slow down that transition. But there should be that that dissolve between the two images. All right. So that's ready to go to turn this in. So now let's turn off the preview. To turn this in, you're going to click on Publish because you need to publish the site. I'm going to click on because I've already published once. I'm going to publish again, and now that site that page is published. I'm going to go to the main page to get the link to share. So now I'm going to share the link. Here's a copy publish site link right there, and it, that's so I'm going to copy that and turn it into Schoology. Click on the the resources, not the resources, click on the submit, click on the editor, and then just paste this into the Schoology editor, and you will be done. Um, if you are on the cause and effect page and you click on the link, you'll end up with the cause and effect. There's the link for this page. I want you to, to use the link for the main page, for your home page. So click on home first then click on the link to copy and then copy the link and put it into Schoology. And there you go. That's the assignment cause and effect. Now I'm going to cut.